What do you do when you disagree with someone? This is something that I've been thinking about lately. So welcome or welcome back to the channel. I wanted to just sit down just for a little bit and talk about what to do when you disagree with someone. I was reading recently, and I'll be honest with you, I can't remember where I was reading, but in uh, the Thompson Chain uh, reference Bibles, there's a cross-reference. Uh, there's a cross-reference in a lot of Bibles where it just shows you kind of verses uh, that line up together, or I like to think about it as they kind of link back to each other. And I come across Matthew 5.25, but now I can't remember where I was reading that uh, that reference, that verse. And of course, Matthew chapter 5 is part of the Sermon on the Mount. And I read this verse, and it just really kind of stuck in my mind. And it's one I've been thinking about for a week or two, and I thought I should sit down and make a video about it. So thinking about it in terms of what do you do when you disagree with someone? What do you do uh, if you're in trouble, if you have a situation in life that may be sticky and you don't know what to do? If you hear hammering, that's Katie hammering in the basement, making her jewelry. So Matthew 5, 25 says, Agree with thine adversary quickly, whilst thou art in the way with him lest at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and thou be cast into prison. I just thought, what wisdom in that verse? And the wisdom that's found in that verse is the wisdom of foresight, is looking into the future and realizing, here's this moment that I have right now, with with an adversary with someone maybe you have a disagreement with and here is my chance to settle this before just like the verse says before uh, you're delivered to the judge and the judge delivers you to the officer and then the officer cast you into prison there's a lot of wisdom that can be found in that and that verse was uh somewhat convicting for me to be honest but I also thought about it in terms of not just an adversary, so not just a disagreement you have with someone else, but maybe it's a situation in life that you're facing that is hard to accept. It's something that you that you don't like. Maybe it's something, a choice that you're going to have to make and you just feel like no matter which way you choose, you're going to lose. They're talking about an adversary, so it's a, it's a, it's a person. But then I thought about that. What if that can even be yourself? And the scripture... You know, that's that's not exactly what the scripture means, but I think that that can be, uh, or should I say that's not like uh, an exact translation, an exact verbatim of what the scripture is saying. But that was just something that I felt like God spoke to me and said, but what if it could also mean yourself as an adversary? You don't know what to do. You're torn with a decision. You're frustrated. You're, you're kind of battling in your own mind with a situation. What if this verse could also be taken like that to where... It means agree quickly with the adversity that you're facing. Quickly make the decision. I'm going to give it to God. I'm going to let it go. And I'm going to trust God. Because if not, this verse makes it clear what can happen. Deliver to the judge. The judge to the officer. The officer into prison. And when we think about it, I want to talk about it both ways, right? That was what was cool about this verse to me, is looking at it both ways. An adversary, a person that you disagree with, but then even just a situation that you don't want to accept. It, it's something that's going on mentally, emotionally, with inside yourself. I want to look at it both of those ways. And there's so much wisdom right there in that, in that verse. Agreeing with the situation. That's the first word, is agree with an adversary, okay? And whether that is with a person, so let's say that you have a disagreement with a person. That's going to happen to us all throughout our life. And what's really tough is when you have a disagreement with someone in your family or a friend. That's when it's hard. You may have a disagreement with someone that you don't know. You you could um, uh, be out in town and be driving and, you know, someone could run into you and then they could be saying, well, you run into me, you pulled out. You could easily get in an argument that way. But what's, and that's hard too, but what's really tough is if you have a disagreement with a family member or with a friend, that is tough. But the wisdom in this verse says, basically, you better slow down and agree and settle this. Because if not, what's going to happen is you're going to be delivered to the judge, the judge to the officer, the officer to prison. It's going to escalate. 
this and again it's the wisdom and that for that foresight of hold on i may be feeling these intense emotions but if i'm not careful and i act on these emotions whether that's i'm going to go go talk to that tell off that person that i disagree with or even within myself man this situation's just really bothering me i gotta figure it out i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do that that can just quickly uh get us into trouble and when we think about facing uh that adversary that could be ourselves when it talks about prison i hear a motorcycle or a dirt bike down the road there when it talks about the end result being prison that can even be in your mind you know what i mean that could be an intellectual prison of just something that you're suffering with that just seems endless but again if we were to say whatever that issue is hey hold on i'm gonna agree with this and, and let's think about what the, the word agreement means. I don't think that this word agreement, whether we're talking about something that you're facing personally or uh, uh, it, like an uh, issue with a family, a friend, someone else. I don't think agree means if there's someone else out there who says, well, I think it's okay. This is a very crazy example, but this will illustrate my point. I think it's okay to murder people if they are mean to you. That does not mean you agree with them. Okay, you're right to stay on uh, term, good terms with them and to keep from arguing. That doesn't mean that. So then what does... We, get, we go deeper and we say, what does the word agree mean? Well, when you think about agreeing with an adversary, with someone else that you have a disagreement with, it doesn't mean you have to take on their viewpoint as yours, but it just means you're going to look at them and say, I respect what they're doing but here's what i'm doing and it's and there are there are cases where uh there's um uh, <laughs> i don't want to get into politics of course but there are there are um life and death kind of situations like that where you know as christians we say no that's wrong i don't believe in that but it doesn't mean that we hate those people who do believe in that you know what i mean it doesn't mean that we agree with them it just means we're gonna say hey we're not going to, I'm not, I'm not going to choose to fight with you because if so, look at what this verse is telling me and look at where I'm going to end up. And this can be in extreme cases like that. I think this could be in any case like that. And I think this verse is also referencing court. It's talking about if you go to court, this is where it can escalate. So don't go to court. Agree on things. Settle out before you even go to court, before it escalates like that. There's so much wisdom that can be found there. And then you think about, okay, what about just the adversity that you're facing yourself? So you're feeling this mentally, emotionally, spiritually. But we can be adversaries to ourselves when we're living in the world and we're not, we're not relying on God, if that makes sense. Uh, temptation from the devil. You can almost look at that as yourself. Uh, almost sometimes you feel split. Like part of you is an adversary. Your flesh, right? Wow, your flesh. That's what I'm trying to say. Your flesh versus your spirit. That can be... Uh, you can be an adversary to yourself, so to speak. And so even in that case, then what is that agreement before things escalate with whatever situation, whatever thing that you're feeling that you're facing? In both cases, an agreement with an adversary, an agreement with an adversary that might be yourself, how you do that is found right here. When you think about someone as an adversary, love your neighbor as you love yourself you look at how you're supposed to treat other people whether they're saved or whether they're not saved i got a bee friend here and that is how you agree on things that's how you're able to let things go and then we know that we can't do things in our own strength but just simply the wisdom of this of saying i better let this go with my spouse with my family with my friend with someone out there in the world before this escalates I know I need to, I'm not sure how to, I'm going to pray, I'm going to trust God to give me the power to do that, to give me the strength. And we know that we should forgive other people because God forgave us. And then uh, that applies to, uh, some of that same wisdom applies to the adversary, <laughs> adversity that we feel with the flesh and the spirit, which is I'm going to look to God, I'm going to rely on God, I'm going to, with my head, know what the right thing to do is and trust God's power to be there to back it up. But if we look at uh, verses 23 and 24, which is right before that, therefore, 
if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there rememberest that thy brother hath aught against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way, first be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. That's huge, folks. That is huge. That is Jesus talking to people after uh, the whole Old Testament that we know about. Of course, I mean other books, but the whole book of Leviticus about just down to the just the uh, finest detail of how to make sacrifices at the altar to atone for sin. And now you have Jesus saying, if you are at the altar and you know that you have an issue with your brother, leave the altar. Okay, the altar is this uh, super important place where you're going to lay things down, where you're going to make atonement for sin, where you're going to connect with God. And, and Jesus is saying, walk away from that and go and fix whatever this issue is with your brother. That is huge. It's it's that important. And then, of course, that's the setup for the, for the verse that we're talking about, which is if you don't do that, you know, we've got the judge, then we've got the officer, then we've got prison. So that's a big deal when we think about uh, adversity, when we think about an adversary, someone out in the world or someone which is so much harder, someone within our own circle that we're going to have an issue with, and even that flesh versus spirit. That's very hard, but man, the wisdom and foresight and being able to stop for a second. And even like it tells us in Psalms 46, stop and be still and know that I'm God. Just I've, I've heard people say it was a couple years ago. There used to be a phrase that said, check yourself before you wreck yourself. <laughs> That's a really uh, good phrase right here that applies. So just really stop and say, hold on just for a second. Let me let me check, check myself before I end up uh, in... Uh, prison ultimately which you know could be actual prison or, or a terrible rift in a relationship with someone i wanted to look just for a second in the nlt bible i like to cross reference to that i just want to look just for a second and uh read the verses in in, in that uh translation i just think it's helpful to read different translations to kind of get the full understanding so verse 20, Matthew 5, 25 in the NLT says, When you are on the way to court with your adversary, settle your differences quickly. Otherwise, your accuser may hand you over to the judge who will hand you over to an officer and you will be thrown into prison. And verse 26 says in the NLT, And if that happens, you surely won't be free again until you have paid the last penny. So there's consequences for that. So whatever this uh, issue is that you have with an adversary, whether that is the kind of spirit and flesh versus flesh that we're all dealing with or someone else, there's consequences. Uh, prison would be a bad place to go. Uh, as we know, nobody wants to go to prison. And I like what the kind of explanation here in the NLT says. It says, you may never get into a disagreement that takes you to court. Most of us are not going to. But even small conflicts mend more easily when you try to make peace right away. In a broader sense, these verses advise us to get our words and actions right with our brothers and sisters before we have to stand before God. Wow, that is the key. Those small conflicts can lead to ultimately serious resentment. And that, oh, there's nothing that the devil loves more than resentment is to get a nice foothold in your relationship with someone and then to try to destroy it with some petty resentment. Wow. That is something that's so easy to succumb to. But if we pray about this verse and we keep it on our heart and we remember, let me think about this before I, I before I make a choice to be mad at someone, before I, you know, deal with an adversary, whether it's someone else or myself. So I don't know. I hope that this I hope that this made sense. I'm trying to think if there was anything else that I really wanted wanted to say. I hope this I hope this made sense and I hope that you'll you'll get something from this video. Uh that verse was just such a blessing to me to think about that and pray over it and just stop before I before I get into some kind of petty disagreement with someone or even with myself that flesh versus spirit to just stop and think for a second I need to slow down and again how we do that is we look at the principles of how God wants us to live we look at the Ten Commandments and that's how we agree that's how we make peace that's that's a huge that's the that's the thing that's at the heart of it is making peace with that adversary whether that be something within yourself or whether that be someone else so hope hope that made sense hope that this video will be a blessing uh let me know what you think uh as always i love 
interacting in the comments and you know i pray for our youtube family every day i'm praying for y'all and i appreciate your prayers for me and my family and always drop a prayer request and look we we do the best we can with comments but even even if it's a prayer request that i don't see i pray for everything i say god i pray for spoken and unspoken prayer requests ones i've seen ones i haven't seen i pray for everything and i believe god sees it all so as always, thank you for watching. God bless you. God keep you. And I'll see you on the next one.